Okay, so let's talk about how to create graphs using Microsoft Excel. And one of the first things you'll want to know is that uh, that you can zoom your data in and out by this little zoom bar at the bottom. So if your data are looking too small, you can adjust them or make them bigger if you want to like this. So that little zoom bar in the lower right hand corner will help you with that. The next thing you want to do is make a graph. So let's take the wavelength data on the x-axis and the observance data on the y-axis and start to make a graph. So I'm going to select the data that I want to graph and I'm going to insert a scatter plot. I don't want discrete points that would look unwieldy. I want a smooth connecting line for my spectrum and we've got a nice spectrum. Now let's get rid of the blank parts of the graph. Let's just put the axes where we started, which was 380 nanometers, and where we ended, which was 900 nanometers, and that's a little better. So our chart's looking better. We need axes labels, so let's do that. Axes title, we want a vertical. Axes title, we want a horizontal. So this would be wavelength nanometers. And this uh, would be absorbance. Okay, and we could call this something that describes what it is, which is just anthocyanin spectra at varying pH. All right, you can call it something different, but that's something descriptive. Now we want to actually add more spectra than the one we have right here. So what we do to add more spectra, if you have a PC, you right click. If you have a Mac, you control click and you select data. So the, it's saying that I already have data in the graph. They're calling it series one. I want to call it by its pH name. So let's go back and find out what pH it was. It was pH. Well, I don't want to do that. Let's go back. It was pH 5.89. So now I've got a label for that spectrum. Let's add another spectrum. I'm gonna say I want X values here. And the Y values were the absorbance values. So let's pick Y values. And we want to say that the series name is pH 6.99. All right, we could keep doing that as many times as we need to, but now we see our graph. It looks quite nice. It has the pH, high pH spectrum and or the low pH spectrum and the somewhat higher pH spectrum. Let's add a legend so we can see which spectrum is which color. So I'm going to add a legend. You could put yours on the bottom, the right, or the top for a long list. Having it on the right is a little bit better. And then let's add more data. So we still have the next couple of pHs to add. So once again, if you have a PC, you'll right click and select data. If you have a Mac, I think it's control mouse click or command mouse click, whichever one seems to bring up the select data option. And we'll do add another spectrum. So let's do the next one. We'll edit it. We need X values. <clears throat> and we need y values and we'll add the next one that is pH 7.59 We've got three. So we'll just keep adding these spectra until we've got all of them included on the graph. And that way we can start to see how the spectra change as we change the pH. And hopefully this is helpful.